Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. I've got an exciting video today. We're going to be making this Halloween sign, three-dimensional Halloween sign, out of some basswood that I just got in. So I've got a uh, 300 by 200 millimeter basswood that just came in that I've been waiting on for quite a while now. In fact, I got a whole bunch of wood that came in. And I decided to go ahead and make this. Not only are we going to make it, but I'm also going to give it away to one of my patrons over at Patreon. I've decided that from now on in all of my maker videos, I'm going to give away the final product to one of my patrons. So let's get started real quick. Now you can find this file on my graphics website for download. So now I've, I'm going to do this just as if you were doing it. So now we'll pretend that I've just downloaded it. I've unzipped the file and I'm going to bring in the Halloween dot and I'm going to bring it in like so. And I'm going to come up here to this little dotted square and zoom out to the size of my work area. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to press the period key and that will turn it sideways to match my work plane. So now that we've got it turned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it with everything selected. I'm going to scale this down so that the largest piece fits on my board. And I believe this yellow one is going to be the largest one here. So I'll try and get it centered as good as I can. Press control and scale it down. And I want to make sure that this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit by rolling my mouse and I need to go a little more. So I'm going to go a little more and I could set this with the numbers up top, but it's easier to do it like this. For me, I'm a visual kind of person. <laughs> and we'll get as much as we can into this square. And I think that looks like about it right there. And I'll just check and make sure that the next one will fit in there perfectly, and it will. And, of course, the third one will. All right, so now we've got these all perfectly fitted to be cut out of this. So now I'm going to drag them off to the side, like so. I'm going to take and put my rectangle on a tool path, because I don't want that to burn or cut. I'm going to come back over here and select the graphic again, ungroup it up at the top. And now I have three separate graphics here. So the first one I'm going to drag from the right all the way up to right about there and I'm gonna bring that one in and then see how it snapped right into the middle there watch snap now these two can be a little tricky over here um, to separate so uh, what I'm gonna do is separate them now to get this out of the way I'm gonna drag from the right again and see if I can do this without selecting anything else and yeah that was okay that's good so now I have that one and I have this one and we'll just make sure that they're separated and actually these have to be ungrouped again but we'll wait until we get back onto the work plane to do that so now I'm going to come back over to my work plane I'm going to click on this and put it on the black zero one layer and this is a cut layer but I want to show you something here everything here is on the black layer so we have to again ungroup this one more time and we have to figure out what exactly gets cut now I know that the outer layer gets cut so that's fine I'm just gonna select one item inside and put it on a blue layer and then I'm gonna take a look at the original photograph again and find out exactly what on here I have to put on the blue layer so there are some pieces that are going to be cut and there are some pieces that are going to be engraved. Now all of the internal pieces, all of these are going to be engraved. So what I have to do is I have to look at this closely and see which ones are internal pieces. This one is an internal piece. So I'm going to press my control button. I'm going to click on this one. That's an internal piece. And you see the little running ants here? That means that it's selected. This is an internal piece. This is an internal piece. And we'll just put those on the blue layer. This one here is also an internal piece. So we'll put that one on the blue. And we've got to look carefully because these things will trick you here if you don't get it right. So those are all engravings. This one here is an engraving. See, you could have missed that little tiny one right there. And I might even be missing some. I'm going to have to go back over this. So I'm going to click and drag from the left over all of these here and put those on the blue layer. If I click and drag from the left to the right, then it will only select things that are completely within that rectangle. So I'm going to click and drag on these, put those on the blue layer. And I think we have some over here too. Yeah, we've got that. Put that on blue. And this is where you gotta, you know, kinda 
look and see what you got going on here to make sure you get this right this should, this is the outside layer so that one is good like that so I'm pushing down on my mouse wheel to move the bed around and it looks like we almost got everything um, okay look at that see how that's not attached to the outside that goes on the blue layer that's an engraving and this also goes on the blue layer and I think we have everything by the way this blue layer is a fill layer so we're gonna come over here to cuts and layers we're gonna bring up the blue layer and I know that I've done my burn tests already so I already know my cut settings and know my engraving settings and before you do any type of wood you should do your burn settings to make sure that you know what it is and I know that the engraved settings is going to be just about right at 1200 and 45 power and that's going to be in fill mode and I also know that the cut is going to be 490 and that's good and I'm just going to tick off constant power mode and say okay so now we have a better idea of what this looks like and we can just make sure that it looks like the picture here and it doesn't because we missed this one right here Oh no, that one's a cutout. Okay, so anything that's on this outside line, anything connected to this outside line is a cutout. If we zoom in real close, you can see that right there. And let's just go over it one more time to make sure that we've got what we need. And I believe that's it. That's a wrap, folks. <laughs> we are ready to go in a second and let's come back over here and do some priority work on our cuts and layers so uh we are going to let's see what is the brown layer oh, okay that's that doesn't count the brown layer is way out here we're going to turn that off the only thing that we're going to be working with right now is the black and the blue so this we're going to just put that on a tool path for right now so that it doesn't burn in fact, we can we can put uh, this one on the toolpath as well. And now both of those won't burn. They'll be completely ignored by light burn. So now the first thing we want to do is the fill, the engraving. So we're going to move that up the priority list to the very top. So this way light burn will go and do all the fills first. And if I right click on here, you'll see the fill. Now the second thing that we want is the cutout. We want it to cut it out of the wood. That's all just perfect. We got our power. We got everything right here. So, oh, you know what? We forgot to turn on the blue layer. <laughs> Can't forget to do that. All right. So now if we come up here to preview and I scrub backwards, you'll see that it's going to do all of the engraving first. And then it's going to come around and cut out the actual piece of wood. So we're ready to go. So let's go over to the laser. And actually, um, let me pull this out. This is my really crappy camera. It's an old webcam, uh, HP webcam, that doesn't really work very good. Uh, it doesn't give me a really accurate view of what's going on, but it lets me see some of what's going on anyway. And here you can see is my piece of basswood. It's on a cut plate and it's ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit the start button and let it do its thing. Now, I'm confident in hitting that start button because I set this up earlier uh, before the video. I put my wood down, put my magnets on, and it's being held in place. And I know that it's framed properly because I set the uh, absolute coordinates on this job. So now we're just going to let this do its thing and I'll speed up the video for you. And then we'll, not that it's a great video that you, you'd want to watch, but I'll go ahead and speed it up and uh, I'll be back shortly. So we're back. Uh, we got all of this done. We can go ahead and get this off the screen. Oops. Let's put this back on the toolpath. I don't know how that happened. Uh, we're going to uh, come up here, grab everything, go ahead and delete that. We're going to grab this one, 
bring it in and get this one ready to cut and take it off the toolpath put it on the cut layer and on this one there's a lot of pieces here so we're not gonna be able to do this unless we do an offset so one looks good outward looks good round is good I'm gonna say okay and now we have an offset perfect so now we'll put that offset on the red layer and that will cut out all of these little pieces right here as well as these pieces inside and this will remain one entire piece except for right here there's a break right here so I guess this is meant to be two pieces yep it's meant to be two pieces and I think this one's good just the way it is so let's see what we got here we got line let's move uh, let's see that's the outer line we're gonna move that to the top we're gonna set that to 490 in constant power mode then we have we're gonna move the black one up we can go ahead and turn that off we'll put that on a tool path now let's just take a quick look and see how this would look and I think this is what we're looking for yep it's gonna cut all the little inside pieces out first and then let me put it on play and then it'll come around and cut the rest of the graphic out in two pieces yep this is two pieces and that's it okay that looks good all right i'm going to send this one over to the laser and then i'll be right back all right and i'm back so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this one we'll zoom out a bit uh grab this one and bring it in zoom back in and this one is i think this one is good just the way it, no the inside pieces have to cut first okay because light burn won't understand this one so what we'll have to do is ungroup it and then all these little inside pieces have to cut first so let's go ahead and first off we'll put the whole thing on the black layer that's the cut layer and then we'll come back here and We'll do most of it by dragging over it, put it on the blue layer and make that line. And then we'll grab the rest of it down here and put that on the blue layer. And now we'll move the blue layer up in priority. One, we need to set this power, right? It needs to be 490 in constant power mode. And let's take a preview and see what we get. So it will. There we go. That's just what we want right there. It's going to cut all of the inside parts out first. All the little bits and pieces. And then it's going to come back around and cut out the rest of it. And that's good. So this one is ready to go to the laser. I'm going to go ahead and send this one over. And then we'll start the assembly. Be right back. piece to cut so we're finished uh, time to look at some of the pictures and this is where I always start and I try and emphasize to everybody if you want to do something right you have to do a burn test before you do a job and it doesn't matter you can have the same pack of uh, basswood plywood whatever and it could be on your shelf and Monday you did a burn and everything went well and then the following Monday you do it again and all of a sudden it's not cutting through well things happen you know changes in humidity changes in temperature changes in the weather and uh, wood reacts to all of those things it absorbs moisture in the air so it's constantly changing it's even though it's dead it's a dead tree that's chopped down it's sort of like a living piece of wood you know it's reacting to the temperature so I started here and this is how I got my best burn 
was 490 and that's where we got those numbers from and this you saw earlier this was the first cutout that i forgot to photograph this is the second one and it came out clean um i like it there was only a couple little bits this one here this this um that didn't drop out right straight off the laser one right here uh, but I just popped them out with my exacto. This is the next one, and this one came out beautiful. I was really worried because I'm doing this all in one shot uh, recording this video, and I was kind of worried about this one. There's a bit right there that didn't pop out. There's a bit over here that didn't pop out. There's one over here. It's actually two here. All of these popped right out with the exacto knife. Uh, it came out really well. I thought this was this cut out just perfectly. And this is what it looks like assembled before being finished. You have all three pieces, all three layers, I should say, stacked on top of each other. Gives it a really nice effect. Now you'll see that in some places the layers line up and in other places they don't. And the reason for that is it gives it that three-dimensional look. So you can see the layer behind it. And here you can see the wood behind it. You see that? You can see the wood behind this layer all through here so we'll move on to the next one and you'll see that these don't line up here but they do on the sides and here are the three pieces four actually that are finished so we're going to click to the next one and this is them assembled this is now there's no white anywhere this is just reflection from uh, the overhead lights this is how it's all assembled i assembled it with ca glue it's a permanent bond it'll last forever here's a little closer shot again this is just reflection of the lights and i think it came out really superb uh it, i think it looks great i really do and here's the corners and on the top side it's perfectly aligned all of these layers as you come down this way they they're not aligned anymore and you get that 3d look and here you can see that you can see the black layer here showing through see it around the edge and uh, i have a couple of close-ups there's the layers the cat and there's the final product and i i think this looks really great i think it came out fantastic i'm not a craftsman i'm not a painter but this just came out okay and uh like i said earlier every maker video that i do i'm gonna give away the project at the end of the video and this one is gonna go to karen b who is my very first uh, Patreon supporter. So Karen, this one's going out to you in, in the next few days. The only uh, few steps that I have left that I'm going to do, I'm gonna run some 600 sandpaper across the orange to get it to look a little more uniform. And then I'm gonna shoot it with some clear coat. So I'm going to put three coats of clear coat on this over the course of three days. And I like to do that because I like to sand in between coats. And I know you can do that after a couple of hours, but you get the best finish if you let it sit overnight. So uh, in about four days, this will be all ready to go, packaged up and sent out to Karen. You can find this file on my website for download, along with tons of other files for Halloween. And I'm, I'm just getting the website started, but there's still tons of files there right now. I'm adding new files every day. But if you wanted to try this, you could download it and give it a shot yourself. Um, really, the whole time cutting was maybe an hour and finishing was maybe an hour. It's not a big, long project um, and you can find follow my steps mistakes and all <laughs> from the video if you need to but I think you can probably figure this one out on your own I had no problem doing it so I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, making this nice little 7 by 11 sign and oh another thing I did too was I uh, ran over to the 3d printer and printed a stand for it so that it can stand up like, like on an end table or maybe on your dining room table if you're having a Halloween dinner or something like that so I hope you enjoyed the video and as always thank you for watching mm -hmm.